Hey everyone, it is Tanya. Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I'm back with another speed build and we're building in the world of Del Sol Valley today. I don't build here very often because honestly, I'm not a big fan of this world. I had such high hopes for this neighborhood in particular when this pack first came out as it looks so realistic with the cul-de-sac. I just really, really like it. But the lots are really huge and there's only a couple of them and one of them doesn't even connect to the road. So it's not a space I use too often. But today I thought it would be perfect since I really wanted to build something more retro inspired. Uh, I have a series on my channel where I am creating houses based on the 50 states in the US. And a lot of the homes I create have a lot of older things in them that have not been renovated over time. And that's always my favorite thing to build. So I thought I would just do a house that is inspired by uh, times past. So this isn't actually based on any decade in particular. I have a variety of things. I was thinking this home just hasn't been updated in a really long time. And so a lot of the fixtures and stuff are still the same from a long time ago. And I was also thinking it wasn't modern day because I did not include modern technology. There are a couple of computers in this house, uh, but one of them is like a fat back like gateway looking PC. And the other one is the one from Cottage Living that looks like a typewriter. So this is definitely not a modern day house and it's really inspired by houses that I feel like are around still today. I see these all the time. They are such a common house type, but they were built a long time ago and it's just like a cookie cutter shape. It just feels like the kind of house we're all pretty familiar with. So I thought it would be fun to play in with a big family. This ends up being a, I want to say it's a six bedroom house with space for seven sims. So it's a pretty spacious home and you can have a large family here. Uh, but before we get any further into this video, I did want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor. Thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Factor is a meal delivery service that sends you fresh, never frozen, chef crafted meals straight to your door. Factor's no hassle, prepared foods, make sure you always have something nutritious on hand when you're too busy to think about cooking for lunch or dinner. I often find myself forgetting to eat or grabbing snacks or takeout when I'm gaming or when I'm editing YouTube videos, but Factor has helped me to break that cycle and I'm eating healthier meals in just minutes. And not only are they delicious, but there are so many different options to choose from. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes or less, even faster than ordering in. And meal plans offer variety with a rotating weekly menu that has more than 34 meal options and over 36 add-ons like smoothies, keto shakes, desserts, and more. I think my favorite meal that I've gotten from Factor is the chicken pesto cavatappi. I really love pasta and this dish was ready in only two minutes. I just popped it in the microwave and was enjoying dinner in no time. So if you'd like to try Factor for yourself, use the link in my description and use code Griffey50APR to get 50% off your first month and 20% off your next month. Thank you again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. So just continuing to work on the shape of the house, the front is pretty much done and I'm trying to add some more to the back to make the house a little bit bigger and also add a slightly different shape to the back of the house. I think I like the front a lot better, but I thought that the back looked quite realistic because in real life, the backs of houses are not usually the like exact same as the front. They're not <laughs> usually mirrored like I tend to do. So I was trying to go for a more re realistic route here and just painting here with some bricks on the bottom and some paneling on top. I ended up using base game paneling, I'm pretty sure here, and I think this brick might be from City Living, if this is the one that I keep. I also had a lot of fun with the garage. I like made a custom garage, you'll see here. I end up layering a bunch of these base game windows. I use tool to lower them a little bit lower into the ground. And then I'm also going to be placing some canvases inside of them to make it so that you can't see through them so that it looks like a paneled garage door, which I think looks so, so cool and feels very realistic to me. That's usually what I see where I live. So uh, I was really happy with how this came out. So here I am just putting all of these canvases in the windows. Uh, you might have heard my dog just shake. <laughs> His collar just jingled really loudly. But um, I thought that this was a really cool way to make this look more realistic. And I'd probably do it again. It's a little finicky because you have to delete the wall in order to place these canvases properly. Otherwise, they're just going to snap to the wall and not be like inside it. Uh, but then when I redrew the wall, it looks like a really cool garage. So uh, there's a little tip for you. I don't remember if I saw that somewhere in the past or not, but I know I've used the canvases to cover things in the past. And I just thought that would be a cool way to create a garage door 
since we don't have them in the game really we have one from city living and it's also in base game debug that is like an art mural your sims can paint on but it's not a functional garage door and i think this looks more realistic for a family home anyway so that's what i grabbed and then i am adding some flower boxes which i changed to a white swatch and honestly this home just looks so cute and inviting on the outside and it's probably a little bit more retro on the inside than I was originally intending because when I see a house like this, I imagine like my childhood in the 90s, but that's not exactly what's going on on the interior. It definitely has a lot of 70s inspiration, which it's probably mixed with 90s as well. It, it's a bunch of different decades, but I also think that's quite realistic because uh, another experience I had growing up was my grandmother's house, which was built in like the 30s, I think, but my whole childhood, it hadn't been updated since the 70s. So there was 70s wallpaper, the kitchen was yellow, like <laughs> everything was very outdated, but that was what I grew up with. So it felt normal to me. And so I feel like this house captures that a little bit where there is a lot of different styles from different time periods and a lot of color. And I just think it's really fun. I also really went all out in the kids' bedrooms and decorated them for different personalities and put so much clutter. I'm really proud of them and I can't wait to show you. Uh, there ends up being three teenagers and two kids here. I had the vague idea that perhaps these parents that live in this house had kids from previous marriages and they remarried and so this is more of a blended family. That was the idea. I don't know if they would have any more kids. <laughs> There's already five in this house and they're all a little bit older so... If you want to play that storyline, though, you could probably repurpose one of the rooms I have because I also do have a separate office on the main floor. So you could turn that into a nursery, which would actually work quite well since the primary bedroom is on the first floor. So the nursery wouldn't be too far away. So there's options for up to eight Sims in this household if you would like to have that. Uh, but anyway, I'm in the backyard now adding a pool. I really wanted it to be like a fun shape, sort of like a bean shape, <laughs> but... Uh, I will be playing with that a little bit later. Well, actually towards the end of the build, I just kind of placed it down there and then I abandoned the backyard and we go back to that at the very end. So anyway, adding some more uh, flowers on the outside and then we're going to be starting to work on the floor plan. It's a little bit of a weird one, but I actually really like how it comes out. You enter in on a platform and then there's going to be like a bathroom separating the front from the back of the house and the living space is kind of central and um, on one side of the entryway is the kitchen and the dining and then the other side is the living room and then we have a couple of rooms out the back uh, being the office and the primary bedroom and there's also a garage in this space as well. So here I am placing down the counters. I end up using my favorite base game ones because I can never help myself. Uh, I changed the swatches a few different times though because I wasn't really sure what was going to work best with this house. And at first I was thinking I'd go for like really older appliances, but then I ended up just going with some of the base game and city living ones that are just a little dated uh, because I thought some things got changed over time. So like, well, the example I had of my grandmother's house, well, the um, kitchen hadn't really been updated since the 70s, like the wallpaper and the counters and all that in the whole house. Uh, some of the appliances were from the 90s because, you know, the fridge broke <laughs> and things like that. Uh, but then, you know, she had the house until, I want to say it was like 2018 or so. And we still had the 90s appliances and things like that. So um, that was kind of the idea behind this home. This looks nothing like her house, but I feel like I see these homes all the time. Let me know if you've seen a house like this, because I feel like it's pretty common and I'm pretty sure one of my state builds, I had a house that looked very similar to this. And I just feel like I see them a lot. Uh, I don't know what the floor plans are, though, because I've never been inside of one. So that's fun. Well, I mean, I have been in one that looks like this on the outside, but you enter in and you're on sort of a landing. It's like a split level house where you can go up the stairs or down the stairs. So like th where you're entering isn't a proper floor. Uh, but that was when I was a child. So I don't really remember it, but. Anyway, this is where I'm sectioning off the rooms upstairs. You can see there's two bathrooms upstairs, two bathrooms downstairs, and there are five bedrooms upstairs. Uh, for a while, I forgot to put a bed in one of those. <laughs> those are not the beds I'm going to use, by the way. I just threw them down to be like, oh, this is a bedroom. So I didn't forget what I was planning to decorate it as. And then just moving some doors around, you know, all the basic things that I typically do in the beginning of a video or in beginning of a build. And here I am painting the whole house. I actually used this wallpaper from the basement treasures kit. 
It's a little bit worn and I just thought it was perfect since I wanted this house to feel dated. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. And actually the tile I used in the house is from For Rent in this like orange and green and cream swatch. It is so pretty and it feels so retro. So I thought it was perfect. I was really excited about it and the kitchen might be my favorite room in this house. I'm excited for you to see how it comes out. So here I am placing down that base game stove and fridge and I scaled the fridge up ever so slightly using the tool mod. And uh, speaking of which, I've been getting a lot of questions over the last like few months. And I mentioned this recently that I've been asked to do a tool tutorial and I'm not gonna do exactly that, uh, but it is still on my to-do list. I've just been under the weather. You might hear it in my voice. I haven't been feeling well lately. So I'm a little bit behind on content. Uh, but I am planning to soon do a video on how I use Tool and the things that I typically type in to manipulate things the way I use it in my builds. It's not going to be a comprehensive tutorial because I don't feel like I know what I'm doing enough to do that. Uh, but I will make sure to link in the description of that video some tutorials that the creator of the mod has made. And hopefully that'll be out in the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping to film that sometime this week. I've just... I have to finish getting over this cold first. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Anyway, here I am hanging up some little notes on the fridge. These are technically sticky notes that came with the parenthood game pack. They are some of the items that can be placed on that parenting like curfew board that comes with the pack. And I always thought that they looked nice as little notes stick, stuck on a fridge or on a wall. And so I just added that in here since I was going for that really realistic look. I'm also getting some pots and pans and knives and things in the kitchen. And uh, I love the bread basket or the bread, the bread box that I put in the kitchen. It is from the Country Kitchen Kit and I just think the green was perfect. It matches the tile really well. Uh, and then this is gonna be the dining room. I just have a six seater table in here. I know that's not enough for all of the Sims in this household, but it's what fit in this space and looked in the nicest. And I know when I play, my Sims never all eat together, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, but just decorating this little sideboard here, I have a beautiful plate and a clock and some cookbooks. <laughs> I was trying to pick things that were a little bit more muted in swatch, but still had a lot of color to them. Uh, but moving on into the living room now, I start with this rug. I do switch it to a different swatch a little bit later because I was really trying to make this rug work and I will eventually use it. <laughs> I think it looks really cool, but it didn't work in this home. I did, however, decide to make a functional TV unit using the broken one that came with the uh, basement treasures kit, and I just scaled up a base game TV into that area so that it looks like it's a console TV. I thought that that was really cool, and <laughs> I was really proud of it, uh, but just picking out our couches, some plants, some shelves up above the TV, and uh, the couches are going to stay the same and so is the chair but I'm going to be changing the swatch of the chair uh, because this room actually ends up having a lot of blue in it unlike the rest of the house which has a lot of green and orange but I thought it was nice to have a variety of colors and there was just something about this room that didn't feel like it was working to me. Watching it back now I don't mind it that much but I'm still really happy with how it did come out and what I did change it to in the end so we should be getting to that shortly. I did also add a ton of record players all over this house uh, this is an item from the Modern Lux kit, and I know we're getting a new record player item from the Party Essentials kit, which I believe comes out tomorrow when I'm posting this, so I am excited to see that. It's not a kit I'm particularly overall excited for, but it should be interesting to check it out, and I will have a video out on all of the items and all of the swatches and my opinions on it when that does release, so that should be fun. Uh, but here I am changing the swatch of this rug to this beautiful blue and yellow rug, and I think it is so pretty. I also got this table behind the couches. That one is from the Crystal Creation stuff pack, and it just feels like the perfect behind the couch table. <laughs> I also changed the swatch of the curtains in here to reflect the new color scheme, and just getting a couple of decorations on this coffee table as well. I really like a lot of the items that came with the Basement Treasures kit. I feel like they just work really well for basements, of course, and attics. But also homes like this where you're going for some older items uh, from a different era. So I really enjoyed using some of those here. Uh, not only is the TV from there, some of the board games I placed in here. I end up using the lamps from that kit and a couple of like junk items that I put in the garage as well. I did really struggle with how to separate the space here in the living room because it's such a long space. So over on this wall, I decided to create some built-in bookcases and put a standing piano over here. 
And for a while I left it like this, but I actually end up creating that into its own little hallway room. So it's not in the same room as the living room. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but here you can see what I'm doing. I just felt like it needed a little bit more separation. So I did add an archway here and then decorate accordingly. It gave me an extra wall space to add some more artwork on and just felt this helped to make the space feel less like open and I don't, I don't know, misplaced somehow. It felt kind of pointless. And now it's like, oh, we have this extra room. It's a walkthrough room that leads you into a hallway and to the back door. But it has, it's like the piano room, which I feel like a lot of old houses had. Uh, like one of the additional sitting spaces. So that's kind of what I opted for there. And then we are getting some more decorations here in the living space. I did get a really cute um, toy box, which is from Growing Together. That's my favorite toy box in the game. It just feels more realistic to me. The other ones we have in the game just feel kind of strange. I feel like they don't fit the style of a lot of houses I build. So I tend to not use them, uh, at least not in the living spaces. I sometimes will in the kids' rooms, but I really like that one. So I use that there and then this is going to be the downstairs bathroom. This is just a half bath. It uses the same tile as I have in the kitchen, but just a plain green wallpaper and, you know, just has a sink and a toilet. It's a pretty simply decorated bathroom and it's one of two I show in this build. I believe there's four bathrooms in this house. There's two upstairs ones. There's this powder room and then there's the ensuite bathroom for the primary, which I believe I show decorating that one. Uh, but anyway, this is that back hallway. I just end up having a little shelf here. Also a place to hang up like some leashes and stuff if you decide to have a dog. I don't think I added any other stuff in this house for a pet, but that would be an easy thing to do if you grab this off the gallery. It is easy to just plop down a couple of food bowls and maybe some toys. Uh, and speaking of which, if you would like to download this, it is available on the Sims 4 gallery. You can find it under my EAID, which is Griffey, G-R-Y-P-H-I. You could also find it under the hashtag Griffey and that information will also be in the description down below as well. Uh, but just finishing up the hallway space here with a chair and some decor on the wall. And then we are moving on into the primary bathroom, which is a very similar in style to the bathroom we just decorated. It just has two sinks instead and a shower tub combo and a couple more decorations. So there's a bath mat in here as well as a bathrobe for your Sims. And I believe we get some like toothbrushes and stuff in here. It's it's a simple bathroom, but I felt like it fit the space very well and fit the color scheme. So I was quite happy with it. I've just been loving that tile on the floor. It's so pretty. I, I feel like I want to use it in most of my builds, but obviously I can't do it in as vibrant of a color depending on the build. Uh, but maybe I'll see some more of that sometime soon. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, this is the primary bedroom, just using the space game bed and a couple of bedside tables from Discover University cluttering those up and you'll probably notice throughout the house I use these same lamps in a variety of swatches absolutely everywhere. I liked the idea that maybe these parents got a good deal on some lamps and some furniture so you'll see that like pretty much all of the teen bedrooms have the same like dresser and stuff in a variety of swatches and they all have the same lamps as well. So it kind of like goes across the whole house. I liked that idea and then I'm just decorating this um, dresser over here. I got a little plant and the jewelry box from Crystal Creations. I'm still so happy to have that. I feel like it's just such a nice realistic item to have in your Sims rooms. And then I felt like it felt empty at the end of the bed. So I added this ottoman from Horse Ranch. And then this is going to be the home office. I really wanted to have a couch in here. <laughs> just like specifically this couch, the pattern on this one feels very dated to me. So I thought it would be nice in this space. And I also end up adding a desk with a computer on it and... We're just changing all the swatches in here, trying to figure out what works best. I think it came out really cute in the end, but it did take me a little bit of time to figure out the swatches. And this is the room where I end up putting the computer that is looks more like a typewriter. I'm pretty sure I placed this one down first, yeah. And then it changed it out for the typewriter. I also got that phone that's off the hook here, which is also from the Basement Treasures Kit and a couple of filing cabinet pieces over here as well and then i'm just cluttering up these bookcases that's pretty much it for this office but i thought it would be a nice thing to have in this space so i was quite happy with that and then we are moving on into the garage where i am just placing down some cabinets and countertops which are beast game ones in a, like a really deep brown kind of ugly color that i thought looks really nice in here and getting lots of storage i also added a washer and dryer i know these are more modern washer and dryers but they're the only ones we have in the game so i put them in here anyway and then of course some clutter and a woodworking table 
I also added, I believe the decoration box ends up in here as well. And so does a hamper and the outdoor trash can. I like to put the outdoor trash cans in a garage when I can, because there's not like a good spot to put them outside. <laughs> and I always think they look weird. Uh, so I was able to put that here in this house. And then we are moving upstairs where we're going to start on the bedrooms. I'm just kind of grabbing a couple of beds that I think I'm going to use in these rooms. Some of them stay as the ones I picked and some don't. Uh, but we're starting here with this purple room. I love this room. I feel like there is so much personality and clutter in this space. And I am going to be changing the swatches of a lot of the furniture to white to match the bed. Uh, but right now they're brown. But we're just getting a lot of posters in here and lots of clutter. I had a vague idea of who this sim was. I was thinking this was a teenage girl that was really into makeup and hanging out with her friends. Just like the generic teenage girl, I suppose. I didn't give this sim like hobbies per se. I just really wanted to use this swatch of the high school years bed because I never used this purple swatch and I thought it was really fun. So I just kind of made it purple themed. <laughs> so uh, this room is going to be much like that. Some of the other rooms have like a particular hobby in mind for the sim and one of them is like incredibly hobby focused, which I'm excited to show you. But this one's just purple and pink and I think it's really pretty. Uh, so that should be it. I'm just going to get a lamp over here and then we should move on to our second bedroom. Uh, this one is for a teenager who is really into music. So I used a lot of posters both from werewolves in high school years that represented that idea and also maybe they're thinking about college. So I added a couple of items related to that as well. So got some uh, vinyls up on the wall. You can see the same furniture that I had in the other room. I also got the record player and the crate of vinyls from the basement treasures kit. And we're just going to go through and clutter up this space. They have a guitar. They have a place to write lots of boxes and a schedule. And I just feel like I injected a lot of personality into these bedrooms and I hope you like them as much as I do because I'm so proud of these. I probably spent more on the bedrooms than I did on the living space, like more time on them anyway. I also really enjoyed using this new desk chair that came with Crystal Creations. I don't think I've used it much yet, but it matches this dresser and or the desk perfectly. So I decided to use that here. And there is that same lamp that I've been using throughout. So just getting a couple more pieces of clutter over here. We have some like receipts and coins and a retainer and then adding some more curtains over on this side and a mirror. I also do end up putting rugs in all of these rooms, even though I have like a shag carpet underneath. It just adds more color and personality to the space. And I'm not against layering rugs. I do it in real life. So I thought that that was kind of fun. I also thought that the sim could have some trophies and we have a beanbag chair in the corner and I tried to add book bags to most of the rooms uh, just to add that little extra touch and a couple of light switches here as well. This is our last teenager and this teenager is like very focused on their schoolwork but they have a passion for fish. I was thinking they like to go fishing and they have like a fascination with all of the different types so we have a fish poster, we have a few different um, decoration pieces. So I have like this bait thing as well as a fishing pole up on the wall. And I just thought it was a fun idea. I almost never use these particular pieces. So I thought it was cool to put in here. I also got a fish bowl, of course, and I am just grabbing all of the same furniture pieces that I have in the other rooms and adding a closet to separate this area. This room has a computer as well and... I didn't decorate this one as much because I was thinking the sim also liked to keep their space very neat. So that was the idea behind this. They just have their little desk space and everything else is pretty clutter free. We do have some of their school projects on display over here though and I did add a small TV in this space. Uh, so I really like those those project pieces. Those are from Parenthood as well. They're actually something your sims can work on to improve their grades and I think they make nice decor pieces as well. But anyway, we are on to our first kids room and this one goes through a couple of different changes. As you can see, we started with an orange rug, now it's brown and this one's kind of like outdoorsy themed. I was thinking this kid likes to spend a lot of time outside. They probably love animals because I did give them a hamster, which is not something I do in a lot of builds, but I thought it was such a fun idea and it also just brings me back to my childhood where I had hamsters. Uh, we had two and they got, they, they made many more. <laughs> we had so many at one point. Uh, but we found them all good in homes, which was nice. But yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to add a hamster setup in here. That comes with uh, my first stuff pack, uh, my first pet stuff pack. 
uh, which is controversial for lots of reasons, but I do think the rodents are quite cute. So I did add that in here and it took me so long to figure out the layout in here because there were so many items I wanted to include, but it's such a small space. So you're going to see me moving everything around because I really wanted to keep that divider that I had in here. I just like that piece a lot. It's from the um, the kids room stuff pack and I never use it. So I really wanted to keep it in here, but I also wanted to make sure I had a dresser and the uh, hamster cage is really big. So I was just moving some stuff around trying to make it all work, but it worked out okay in the end. I, I was quite happy with it. And that should be it for that room. And we are moving on to our last kids room. And this one is like, animal themed. I was thinking the sim likes horses and like little critters and outdoorsy stuff as well, but in a different way than the other one. The other one was a very different vibe, but I think these kids probably get along with their interests. So this is like a horse girl child's bedroom, basically. Uh, so I had a lot of fun with this one as well. I really love that play tent over in the corner that has the cows and stuff on it and the yellow color scheme I was able to use in this space I thought was really cute. It's just a little bit different than some of the rooms I've done in the past. And I am bringing in that same dresser and stuff in here, even though it doesn't quite match the bed. I still thought it was quite realistic to have a matching set and everyone to have like the same ones. That was kind of what I had growing up. And I also lowered down the mirror so it looks like they're attached to the dressers because that was another thing I experienced growing up is that the mirrors were always like part of the dresser. It wasn't like a separate item. But anyway, we're moving outside now to work on the backyard and I decided to rotate the pool and we will be changing the water so it's not so dirty. And I get a couple of lounge chairs out here as well. And it ends up being just a really nice backyard space. I feel like it's going to be a good spot for entertaining. There's a lot of kids activities I end up putting back here as well since this is a pretty big family home and has space to grow. So there is one lounger in the pool and... We end up getting a tree house back here as well. There's a barbecue, a place to sit and eat. And I think I added a tent in the backyard too, which I think is such a cute idea for your Sims to like camp in the backyard. I love that concept. So I included that. I also did put a fence around the pool area in the Sims. It doesn't really matter that much, but in real life, you would want to have that area fenced off for safety. So that is what I did here. And then I'm grabbing the tree house object from the growing together pack and placing that back here and working on some landscaping around this little tent. I also added the bucket to throw water balloons and the toddler pool. So if your Sims want to play around with those as well, I just thought that those were nice activities for the backyard. But yeah, we're just finishing up some landscaping now, getting a bunch of plants all around, some shrubs, gonna work on the terrain paint as well, and getting a nice table out here for your Sims to sit at and enjoy some food together. But that should be pretty much it for this build. I had so much fun with this one. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And if you click that bell, it'll turn on notifications so you'll be notified when I upload. Just moving the house a little bit closer to the front of the lot because it felt like it was a little too far set back and I wanted to add a fence around the front, like a little picket fence. And then we should be heading on into screenshots. Thank you so very much for watching. Please enjoy those screenshots and I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.